In working with sets, we will need to understand the following concepts. First, we will say that two sets are equal if they have exactly the same elements. To indicate that two sets, let's say A and B, are equal, we'll use the usual equal sign and we'll read this as A equals B. We'll also find it useful to say that two sets are equivalent if they have the same cardinal number. Now recall that the cardinal number of a set is the number of elements in the set. And we use the notation NA to designate the cardinal number or the number of elements in that set. And NB would be the number of elements in set B. So if A and B have the same cardinal number, then by this definition they are equivalent. Next concept, we will say that set A is a subset of set B if every element of A is also an element of B. And in this case, we'll write this symbol here to indicate that A is a subset of B. If A is not a subset of B, then we can write the same symbol but with a line through it, and we read that as A is not a subset of B. Now the fact that uh, we have this line under the symbol sort of suggests that A could be equal to B, and that possibility is not precluded by this definition. But if we want A not to be equal to B, then we can refer to A as a proper subset if we can find an element in B which is not in A. So A is a subset of B, but A is not equal to B, then we write A is a proper subset of B using the symbol without the line. Another way to think about that is that the cardinal number of A must be less than the cardinal number of B. For example, set A consists of the elements 2, 3, 5, and 7, and set B consists of the elements 7, 3, 2, and 5. In comparing these elements, we see that they match up, and therefore A is equal to B. The fact that the elements in B are listed in a different order makes no difference. Next example, we have A consisting of the elements W, X, Y, and B consisting of the elements red, white, and blue. These sets are obviously not equal, but they each have three elements. Their cardinal numbers are equal, and therefore we say that these sets are equivalent. Next example. We need to determine whether each set is a subset of the other set. First, if A is a set consisting of elements 1, 2, and 3, and B consists of 1, 2, 3, and 4, then clearly A is a subset of B. So we will write A is a subset of B. Now let's consider these two sets here, written in set builder notation. L is the set of people who live in Los Angeles, and C is the set of people who live in California. And clearly, 
Uh, L is a subset of C because Los Angeles is located in California. And so we can write L is a subset of C. Now let's consider this question. Is the empty set a subset of a set? For example, if A is a set consisting of the elements 1, 2, and 3, is the empty set a subset of A? Let's reason this from the other direction. If we can find an element in the empty set that is not an element of A, then we would conclude that the empty set could not be a subset of A. But since the empty set has no element, it cannot fail this test, and so therefore we conclude that the empty set is a subset of A, and in fact the empty set is a subset of any set. The next idea I want to tell you about is the Venn diagram. Venn diagrams represent a handy graphical way to represent sets and subsets. Okay, and what we do uh, usually is to draw a rectangle to represent the universal set. Okay, so if we have some universal set in mind, then that is represented using a rectangle. And then to represent subsets of the universal set, we draw circles or ovals inside the rectangle. So let's say we have this oval here representing the set B, and then Inside B, we have A. And we can write that this Venn diagram represents that A is a subset of B. Sometimes we need to make a list of the subsets for any given set. And that exercise usually requires that we be somewhat systematic. Because it's real easy to lose track if we're not consistent and systematic in the process. Okay, so, for practice, let's list out all the subsets of the set consisting of the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all of the possibilities for um, first no element. If n of a is 0, there's one subset, namely the empty set. If the cardinal number is one, then there are four possible subsets, namely the set with element one, the set with element two, the set with element three, and the set with element four. cardinal number is 2, then there are six possibilities, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 
two, three, two, four, and three, four. Three element subsets. There are four of these, and you can see that because we can leave out each element in turn. So one, two, three, that leaves out four. One, one, two, four, that leaves out three. One, three, four, that leaves out two. And two, three, four, leaves out one. And finally, a four element subset consists of the set itself. Okay, so the number for each cardinal number of the subsets, one, four, six, four, one, the total is 16. and they're all listed out here in the notes.